no, Kazira! Ah! Oh no! Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to move on to part 2 of our vases lesson. Now in the last video we learned how to make a plain old cylinder vase. There's nothing special about this vase, it's really just a very large cylinder, but it does still count as a vase. And going over this step is very important because learning how to make a very large cylinder is pretty much the foundation of making your very first vase. But today we're moving on to part 2 of the vase lesson, and that is teaching you guys how to make the shoulder of a vase. And you do have to remember, whenever we're talking about ceramic artwork, we usually talk about it in the form of the human body, right? Here's the foot, here's the waist, here's the shoulder, and here's the head. So today, I'll be teaching you how to form this rounded shoulder part right here. Learning how to form this shoulder part is really necessary for making those really nice vases that we see everywhere. And it's actually fairly easy to make as long as you keep one main thing in mind whenever you're throwing your cylinder. And sometimes it'll naturally form by itself without even putting in that extra work. And today, we're gonna go over that one thing. First, let's throw our cylinder. This is pretty much what we had in part one. This is a cylinder vase. Almost every shape in pottery comes from a cylinder, but your main goal this time is to make the shoulder of this piece. And that means that the larger your cylinder is, the more difficult it is to make that shoulder. You see this right here? The body's kind of skinny, and you'll notice that the body's kind of skinny because this shoulder piece right here is just as wide as this cylinder is right here. The only difference is I clutched in this part here by collaring in, and I clutched in this part here also by collaring in. So the one main thing that you have to remember whenever you're making a vase with a shoulder like this is that you need to keep it collared in because you're gonna do one of either two things. You're either going to collar a piece in just like this part right here, and it's automatically gonna make its own shoulder, or number two, you're gonna have to take the cylinder and pop a certain part of that cylinder out that being the shoulder piece. But either way you look at it, you're gonna have to keep one part of the vessel smaller than another part of the vessel. And that's why you need to keep certain parts collared in. So it's best if you just keep certain parts of your cylinder collared in so it doesn't cause you too much trouble. Now there's a couple different ways to collar. There's using the six point method, one, two, three, four, five, six, or you can use the eight point method while using your two little non-pinky fingers down here. I call them non-pinkies because I don't know what they're called, but I know they're not my pinky and they're not my middle finger, so it's my not pinky. I usually like to collar in my stuff all the way from the bottom and go all the way to the top. So I'm just gonna make contact, my two middle fingers down here, right? Contact with my thumbs right up here, and contact with my two fingers right up here. And I'm just gonna pinch this in just like this and keep my wrists kinda high. The reason I'm gonna keep my wrists a little bit high is that this is gonna guide the rest of my cylinder. If I just do this, I only have pressure on this part here. But if I let the cylinder rub up against the top part of my wrist right here, then it'll kind of guide the rest of my cylinder upwards. And once you get to the top, start to release pressure and put your fingers right over the edge and just choke in just like this. Remember when you're doing this, you need to keep contact with all six points at all times while you're choking. One, two, three, four, and of course I have my thumbs down here, five, and six. I say this because there are a couple different forms to actually coloring in your vessel. And this is but one of them. But the one thing that I don't want you to do is to try not to force the clay to your will. If you're just gonna choke it in just like this and have pressure only on this part here, and just choke it in as hard as you can, you're gonna get some pretty wobbly clay. And you're only going to put pressure on one part of the vessel at a time, so you're essentially only going to choke in one part at a time. But when you do it with a form like this, you're making multiple contact points at a time, which means that you can very easily bring your cylinder right back into its natural form of being nice and straight. And of course, when you put your fingers at the top right here, you're making sure that you make contact with the inside of your clay so you don't get too much of a wobbly surface. Extra Potter Tip! If you find it difficult to keep form while you're throwing and keep your wrists up like this, or it hurts at all, you can pretty much get the same effect by choking in like this, of course, using the six points that I taught you. One, 
two, three, four, five. But instead of using your wrist to guide it, you can always tip your fingers upside down and use your fingers to guide it just like this, while still making contact with these two points here, these two points here, and these two points here. The only difference is that you're using your pointer fingers to guide instead of your wrists. So you can always choke just like this if you find the first way uncomfortable. And of course, when you get to the top, always put your fingers on the inside and just collar in very gently. Remember to release pressure when you get to the top, otherwise you're going to get some real wiggly clay. Now that we have a nice collared in cylinder, we can probably pull one more time. And now we have a cylinder that's ready to form. Now once you get here, you've already done half of the work. Now you just have to decide where you want your shoulder. I prefer to have it about two thirds from the very base of the cylinder itself. This leaves enough room at the very top just in case I want to make a fancy top. I can use the rest of the clay body to make a nice big body and shoulder. Now there's two different ways you can start to make your shoulder. Number one is to color this bit in right here and it'll kind of automatically make this shoulder for you. You see, you have a little round shoulder here. The first technique is if you just want a slight shoulder, a very little shoulder. But the second technique is if you want to make larger shoulders. Do you guys remember when we went over bowls and how we made a bowl? We pretty much put our hands on the inside of the clay with a nice wet hand and we just pushed the cylinder outwards and sooner or later it made this kind of bulbous shape. Well, if you think about it, this bulbous shape here is the same exact shape that a bowl would be in if it was upside down. So what I want you to do now is the same exact thing you would do if you were making a bowl. Go ahead, wet your hand, put your hand inside the cylinder here, and just push out a little bit as the wheel spins. But make sure you do it only on this part right here, and not any other part of the clay body. See, and now you have a much larger shoulder. And just like with a bowl, you can always get your metal rib and create that self-supporting curvature and just go ahead and straighten that up a little bit. This will make your shoulder look a little bit more clean. And while you're using your metal rib, you can always use the edges of your metal ribs right here and push down just like this to make a really jagged shoulder, something that really has definition to it, just like this. And there you go, you have made your very first shoulder to your vase. Here's the body, here's the shoulder, and here's the head, just like that. And if you want to make it look a little bit more elegant, you can always take the very top portion right here and collar it back in again. It's most likely widened out from you sticking your hand inside and making this shoulder right here. So if you want to make it look a little bit fancier, you can just choke this part in right here, just like this. You see, now you have a fancy vase. Once I'm done with everything, I personally like to give this top portion one more pull. I don't really have to pull the rest of this body, I've already done everything I want to do to it. But just the head of the piece can stand to be a little bit longer and it looks a little bit nicer with vases. And there you go, now you have a nice long neck that goes pretty well with the form. Well thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really hope this helps some of you guys create those nice shoulders for your vases. This is the next step in the progression of vases. After you make your cylinder, you should learn how to make those nice good curvatures out of those cylinders. And the shoulder of a piece is one of those main focuses whenever we make vases. And once you have your cylinder down, it really just comes down to choking certain parts of that cylinder. When you really think about it, this was the cylinder, this is a popped out version of that cylinder, just like the bowls we made before, and this is just a choked in version of that. And as long as you can pop out and choke in certain parts of your cylinder, it's easy peasy. Easy peasy, lemon difficult. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. I really hope this helps some of you guys out make those nice shoulders for your vases. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Now I gotta make it all uncolored again just to show you guys what's... I've colored 14 different times and this clay is getting so tired.